coming up on See Here Love. We're intentional in every other area of our lives and sometimes we wing our parenting out of exhaustion. I would just urge you to reallocate some energy. Save something. Don't come home from the, from the office just spent. joining us on See Here Love and as you can tell as I'm laughing it's a sh show Matt because it's the men's panel. Yes excited Mel. Are you? Yeah totally. You're not terrified at all? I am not terrified. Okay <clears throat> uh, this is really cool because it was really important for me and then when I was talking to you about co-hosting about doing a men's panel. Yeah. Why do you think it's so important to have a men's panel on a women's show? Well, I mean, as we were chatting about it, I just felt like, you know, there's some conversations that you have and have been having over the years in your show and um, with primarily a female audience, mm -hmm. primarily. Yeah. And, you know, when we've done men's stuff together before, our one-offs and stuff, we always found like, hey, there's some good conversations that maybe we want to press into a little bit more. Yeah. And so excited to do that in an intentional way throughout this season. So yeah. I'm really excited about it. And it's not just you. We've got these two guys yes. with us from Calgary Art Kung from Toronto, Chris Chase, who are going to be with us every men's panel. They're our regular contributors. So welcome, guys. Hello, hello. Hi. And Great to be here. Yeah, What's up, guys? I know. And you Great know what's so crazy? You. What we were talking about is that I think you have to have a beard or mustache to be on the panel. That was a prerequisite. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't care if you guys were good or not. It was the beard. And art has re art's really <laughs> spiced it up for us. Let's be I honest. <laughs> I know this. It's amazing. So here's the thing. It's the <clears> men's <throat> panel. This whole show, I'm in a posture of listening and learning. But today it's all about what it means, how to be an intentional and present dad. Mm. So I want to start off with this because I'm not a dad. But what would you say is the greatest thing that you love about being a dad? Greatest, greatest part of being a, about being a dad, Chris? I think easily, I mean, there's so many things you could think of, but it's when you see your child begin to develop a personality that is their own. Mm. When they begin to come into their own and you can kind of see, oh, you like art, you like sports, you like this, you like that, you don't like this. And seeing them grow in independence, selfishly it's because they depend on you less outside <laughs> of needing money for stuff, but mainly because they're becoming who they are meant to be. And you're seeing the best parts of you and your spouse in them along with these other sort of Je ne sais quoi yeah. that are unique to them as kids. I like that. That's mm. really good. Art, what about you? Yeah, I'm. I I feel the same. It's, it's uh, it's the surprise. You get to be surprised by who they are. You get to be surprised by uh, what they've developed into. It's it's not like other ministry things. You can't really strategize. You can a little bit. <laughs> You'll be unsuccessful. You can strategize <laughs> all you want to. You know, make them be what you want them to be. But I think the joys, he, he, my, my son is a reality TV show to me. Like, I am right. hooked. I want to watch him. I'm, I'm his biggest fan. You know, like, I'm there for him. Mm. So, yeah, it's a joy of surprise. The greatest reality yeah. show. I like that. That's good art. Yeah. Matt? Yeah, I, I, I mean, exactly what you guys are saying. I think in the beginning, we have three kids. And in the beginning, I was just blown away by how can they both come from Bobby and I and be completely different people? Like, just what <laughs> on earth is happening? And now that they're a bit older, just trying to help them, like, reach their full potential and launch well and kind of cheer them on and be there through good and bad as they're becoming their own independent yeah. people. Yeah. Which is a big thing to kind of, it's, we're starting to try to let go. And that's, that's a different feeling for sure. Well, I wanted to start off with yeah. that question because it's going to get harder as we go in this conversation, but I think it was really important. And as a woman, mm. um, you know, in a marriage, and you're going to see later on my husband, Chris, but just how can we as women and partners support dads? And I think that's the whole point of why I wanted to bring this topic, and Matt, you and I talked about this, yeah. to, to encourage dads, to support dads who could be struggling, but also what it means to be a present an intentional dad for our kids, because that's what I'm hearing kids say, that's what we want the most is, is dads who are present. Yeah. So I'm excited for this conversation coming ahead. Yeah. So we're gonna go now to a conversation, Mel, you had with John Tyson, yeah. who's a pastor and leader in New York City. Um, and he has written a new book called The Intentional Father, A Practical Guide to Raise Sons of Courage 
and character. So you sat down to talk about what it means to be present and mm -hmm. intentional as a father. So let's check out some of the highlights of that conversation. John Tyson, I have been waiting and excited for this interview because I think the last time we were together was in Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada, yeah. at the Breakforth Conference. Yeah. And I interviewed you on one of the Fruit of the Spirit, which was really great. You were very thoughtful and wise. But I'm going to do some quick questions to you, okay. and you can say some short answers, because I want to kind of find out you being a dad yeah. and your thoughts about being a dad. And, uh, and then we'll get into your book uh, on sort of these five areas you've identified uh, to be an intentional father. So, John. But just before you ask, just so it's very hard for me to give short answers. I'm like a notorious, <laughs> I give three answers last an hour. So let me do my best here. Let me, let me get ready. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like say short. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like yes, okay, no. Okay, gotcha. But you know what gotcha. I mean. Okay, ready? Yep. John, number one, the best thing about being a dad. Uh, revelation of the father's heart. Tangible encounter of God's heart for me. That's good. Nicely done. That was like answer. Strong and powerful. Great. Number two, the toughest part about being a dad. Uh, kids, kids rebelling. Just like when your kids make unwise choices, the, like the level of nothing in my life I've ever experienced has wounded me more deeply than my kids' rebellion. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. You're like that wasn't strong and powerful. Done. That was so powerful. No, like, you we're gonna really like kind of unpack so that yeah. as we as we start talking through the book because I, I have a fourteen and seventeen year old. Oh, you're in it. Fourteen you're in daughter, it. seventeen year old son. So we're we're in some we're in some mm. some interesting waters and times right now, John. <laughs> okay, um, I I want to ask this too, and then and come into the book, but, but this intentional father. Like, what does that mean? Intentional and present. We don't we use intentional for for. Things like, like, let's be intentional about in work, you know, in work conversations or intentional in being a good friend. But what does it mean to be an intentional father, John? Yeah, and I, I, I want to frame this. It is definitely hard work. Um, it, it's, it's heartbreaking work. Mm -hmm. It's also the, the greatest joy of your life. You know, I mean, you made these kids. What a miracle. Like they literally exist because you help create them. It's just staggering. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just, if I could say anything, it's like we're intentional in every other area of our lives and sometimes we wing our parenting out of exhaustion. I would just urge you to reallocate some energy. Save something. Don't come home from the, from the office just spent. You know, like save something for your kids. Now, obviously, there's going to be stay-at-home, you know, mums and dads. And they're like spent because they're with the kids all the time. But at some point they will go to school. At some point you will have larger chunks on your own. And so to me, it's like, I always tried like one of the, my default a lot is, is no, I'm a massive introvert. I cannot get enough time on my own. Um, so one of the things I would always like consciously discipline myself was to say, when my kids would ask, I would say, yes, dad, you want to play with me? Yes. Dad, you want to watch this show with me? Yes. A lot of times I was like, I'm tired, but I was like, no, I'll regret this. Yes. Dad, can we go to the mall? Yes. Dad, can we go get cookies? Yes. I want it to be a yes, dad, not a no out of tiredness, dad. And um, it was mm. like, there was sacrifice in doing that, but I'm telling you, I've got so many wonderful memories that simply by being there, great things happen. And the intentionality often creates environments of possibility. And it's just like by being there, things can happen that if you're not there, it won't happen. So to me, I mean, I would just say, yeah, put your heart into it. I give you my word. You will wish for these days back, at least some of them. So do what you can now, and then you'll have memories to savor and to look back on, I think, with fondness and joy. I'm here in my hometown of Burlington, Ontario, hanging out downtown in our village square. And as I walk these cobblestone streets, I realize that it has taken a village to ensure that See Here Love's mission and vision is shared across Canada, around the world, that you are seen, heard, and deeply loved by God. As a body of Christ, there is hope for us to grow and reconstruct together. We couldn't do this work without you sharing life-changing stories of what Jesus is doing in people's lives, stories of hope 
and freedom and healing in areas that matter to me and to you. I want to have the faith to believe that His plan is good even when it's taking that detour that I don't really understand. We have so much more to do and so many more people to reach with the life-changing message of Jesus. For a monthly donation of $25 or more, you can help us do just that. And we'll send you a special thank you gift of our favorite things. Go to seeherelove.com slash give or call 1-800-265-3100 and join our See Here Love Village today. The world is changing, but the Word of God remains unchanged. So hey, we'd love for you to join our community at See Here Love, and I love John's response. And you know, Matt, we met him a number of years ago in New York City for mm -hmm. church planting like conference. Like 2015. I know. He was so great. He continues to be inspiring, mm -hmm. and I just love about his tips on how to be an intentional dad. So lots of learning there. Yeah, cool. Okay, so we talked about the best things, guys, about being a dad. Let's talk about the tough stuff, because that's mm -hmm. also like pretty much where the rubber meets the road. What is, what would you say the toughest part of being a father is for you? Art, let's start Me? with you. Yeah, let's go with you, Art. <laughs> yeah. um, if, if Mel knows me, um, if you know me at all, you know that I love giving you my two bits. And I think that's the hardest thing for me is to bite my tongue, not tell him what to do. Actually watch him and give him a chance to struggle, mm. a chance to discover, a chance to fail. And, and you, you're trying to balance that wisdom of going, now I have to father, I have to teach him his, uh, how to respond. I have to teach him the ways. Or you let him uh, swim, you let him go. And I think that's the hardest part for me is trying to learn that balance. Like, when do I step in? When do I not? Just let him be. And he can, he might make a really severe mistake, mm. but it, it'll be his, right? So I think that's a hard place for me. Yeah, I, I love that because when they're a bit older, I mean, when they're younger, you're watching them so they don't hurt themselves, fall, crash mm. into stuff, fall down the stairs. But as your kids get older, you're trying to let them make some mistakes and step back and be well, like, when do, I, when do I intervene and when do I not? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes even younger, like my, my son, when he was really young, he would, he loved to be uh, active. He loved parkour. That was kind of, he wanted <laughs> to be a parkour kid. And he, he would jump over everything and mm. he would trip, he would fall, he would hurt himself. And my wife would always re react like, <gasps> and, I, you know, you let him do it. Well, you know, he might get a head injury. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're going to learn. <laughs> no problem with the head injury, you guys. That's like it's such a dad thing. Get a head injury. No, I'll let him go. That's okay. We'll, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> How about you, Chris? <laughs> Toughest part of being a dad. What are you noticing? Um, I think for me, because my kids are, are a bit younger, uh, 12 and nine, hmm. it's watching them go through stage stages that I went through myself and I don't know what to do with. Right. Because it was one thing to go go be 12 years old and go through the beginnings of, of being a teenager. It's another thing to watch my daughter go through it and help her understand how to choose the right friends, knowing that some of her friends, they may not be on my favorite list or for my son in terms of his loves and his, his interests. And then realizing that there are some disconnects. There are going to be some things that they love that I'm not going to understand. And in watching them, realizing the hardest part about being a dad is that I'm actually becoming more like my dad whom I love but I'm actually the old guy learning as opposed to the young cool guy who I always think I am teaching yeah and so doing the disconnect and figuring those pieces out trying to be a teacher while also trying to be a learner and be a student at the same time with my kids is is there's some moments of friction there but we're we we make it work yeah I grew up in a family of only boys I have an older brother and a younger brother and, and now as a dad, I have two daughters and a son. And part of my learning and all that is how do I raise a son? That felt, okay, I get that part. I understand what he's going through. But then with the girls, I'm like, I got to learn a whole new way of being and understanding. And that has honestly been a tough, but like a, a, re a rewarding journey. But man, that was hard in the beginning days, trying to figure out what to do with kind of the different kids, for sure. Oh, the subtleties. There's so much more subtleties that I didn't know. Or conversations are happening with eyes that I wasn't aware of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the eyes tell oh, a lot. That's good. Exactly. Let me just jump in because I want to know um, what would help you guys to be a present, intentional dad. Because that's what the show is. Yeah. You know, Matt, for you, like, 
because I think there's a lot of dads that struggle with it. And when I've listened to young people, they say, we just want you to be there yeah. for us. You, we don't want you to say stuff. You don't, we don't even want big gifts. Yeah. We just want you to be there. So, so Matt, for you, what, what do you need to help you be really intentional and present? You know, my biggest thing is I love to have uh, like a million things on the go at once and I kind of thrive in that, but that doesn't work with parenting, I've mm -hmm. discovered. So um, I can't treat my kids like they're one of the things that are going on, especially with, you know, all the demands and, and sometimes it's tough stuff you're, that's get, <laughs> taking my attention, but there's lots of good things that you're excited about, yeah. but I need to just kind of shut those things down. And I've tried my best, I'm still trying, I haven't arrived at like figuring out when I'm on for work and other people and then when I just need to be present with the kids. And that's, that's been a big deal because often it's not that you have a word of wisdom or like you're this wise sage. They just want, like you said, they just want you to be hanging out, to be there, yeah. to watch the game or to talk about whatever, or watch a show. And that is like quality time in some, in some way. So it's just like removing distractions, I guess, is the easy way of saying it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Art, what about you? How, how, what do you need to help you be present and intentional dad for Evan? I think the question answers it itself, right? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things, like you said, Matt, there's a lot of things drawing at you, pulling at you. It's, it's volunteerism even. It's things that are helpful. Like mm. for those of us who work in ministry, they're all good stuff. But, you know, you can trade all those good stuff for a great thing for your, your primary place of ministry is with your family. And uh, I think, you know, everything has to take a second uh, or a backseat to, um, you know, second place. If they don't, and, and your kids feel they're second place, you know, how, how awful would that make you feel as a, a, a father or as a parent in general, right? Mm -hmm. Well, our kids have to feel that they're number one in our lives. Mm. And uh, I'm not saying one of them is number one. And, you know, <laughs> they're all favorites? number one. We favorites? all have our favorites. Do we have a favorite? Do we admit that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Mm. Chris Chris is like, uh, yeah. I have a favorite. No, don't admit that, don't, Chris. My, don't my, say my, it, Chris. My kids know the pecking order. My kids know the pecking <laughs> order. <laughs> they know. Chris, um, what about you? In being intentional and present dad, what's it going to take? I think for me, it's when I'm home, I'm dad. I'm not pastor. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm, I'm husband and I'm dad and treating my home as such. And so I do my best to leave work at the door when I walk in the door. Now, the past year, that's meant like leaving work in the basement or leaving work <laughs> at the kitchen table because of the pandemic, but leaving it where it is so that when they need me, I'm there and I'm there the entire time. And I'm not just being a dad right. when I'm on holidays or on vacation, yeah. but I'm dad and husband all the time. Yeah. And so being yeah. intentional, it means actually intentionally making space and making time to be that and to do those things. So it means learning about why Fortnite is important and why <laughs> drama with this person and that person is something that's really bothering my daughter right now and being fully present in that, even if I have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah, let's talk about the way faith yeah. informs then your parenting. So let's, Art, right back to you. How does your faith, your journey with Jesus, then shape the way you parent your kids? You know, I, I think they, they mutually inform each other. It's amazing. Like when my uh, son was born... Here's a kid I had no idea, hmm. male, female, no idea, looked at this child born, didn't look like me. I didn't think he looked like me, didn't look like mom, just looked like himself. And instantaneously, I, I understood agape love, unconditional love. I understood it immediately. Hmm. This kid's done nothing to deserve my love. <laughs> hmm. And he's done nothing to not deserve it. Like instantaneously, I love him. And I think that shaped my understanding of God's love for me. And, and therefore, it, it makes me a better father, it makes me a better person, it makes me better uh, a child of God even, because I'm, un, I'm understanding theology hmm. from a child born. This is crazy, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And so I, that changed my look at who God is, how God looks at us as people. And at the same time, if therefore, if I believe God is the greatest of all fathers, what does that mean for me? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, do I have his spiritual DNA in me to father? And so I think it's, it's, it's shaped mutually. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's my, that's the beautiful. birth of my child just changed me. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Chris, how about you? I'd say two quick things. One scripture is filled with bad dads. <laughs> and so it, it actually, yeah. 
That should be another um, show. That should be another bad show. Bad dads of the Bible. Yeah, bad dads of the Bible or a book. Go I ahead. mean, it's like from the jump, like it's it's like the I might steal that goes, title. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my book. Yeah. Um, or it might be a new podcast, Melinda. You never know. Um, but the idea of like it, it it takes the pressure off to know the like. I'm in when I'm not at my best. I'm in, I'm in sort of decent company, mm. but then reminding myself also of the the lessons that are taught in in their mistakes. Right. And then second thing I would say is how it informs my faith is the fruit of the spirit becomes alive, even more so. How much patience have I needed, or or faithfulness have I needed, or yeah. self control have I needed? Yeah. Because that then not only does that inform my parenting, it then informs how my kids then grow up. Yeah. So knowing that there's examples of both good and bad dads, and then knowing that the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of, of Jesus is in, alive in me so that I can do a better job at parenting them so that hopefully they do a good job in whatever they're doing in their lives. Mm. That's good. That's good. Matt, what about you? I literally jotted down Galatians <laughs> there 5, There is going to be a battle spirit. for the book. You know that. Who's copywriting it first? No, I, not the title. Oh. The, the fruit of the spirit. Oh, the fruit of the <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I literally did that too. Like if I'm at the end of my day and reflecting on how I've done as a dad, yeah. And I think about how, you know, how have I been loving, patient, kind, good, faithful? How has that impacted my kids? I jot down the exact same thing. I love, I love what you say too, Art, too, about seeing your child for the first time and all of a sudden knowing this different kind of love and connection and mm. care. That's, it's just beautiful. It's, and you can't get ready for that. You can't yeah. tell anyone that's what it's going to be no. until you experience it in that moment. That's really beautiful to hear yeah, just quickly, it, just that whole idea of seeing a baby, seeing your child actually is a very... Uh, spiritual connecting with God the Father. Well, the As mom gets dad, to right, feel it the whole yeah. time. And then the dad brings yeah. up this, wow, mm -hmm. this is like God, and it, it's really cool. Things are getting real now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Things are getting real. Well, listen, mm -hmm. I, had, I have the privilege of uh, being married to a great dad. And uh, I've seen my husband, Chris, uh, really be exceptional, especially through the COVID-19 pandemic, where I've watched him patiently, uh, really parent... Uh, Nathan and Sophie are kids and, you know, through mental health challenges, loneliness and fear. And Chris was there uh, through it all. Don't want to be emotional, but I think just seeing a dad step up in place of crisis is pretty amazing. So who better than to do our good word in this show, uh, sharing his encouragement with scripture and what it means to be present than my husband, Chris Orm. So Chris, from the studio to your guitar room, let's go. Thanks, Mel, and thanks to the guys for such great insights on what it means to be present in the life of our kids. I'm a dad of two great kids, and it's the best. It's not always easy, but at every stage, I realize I'm doing this for the first time. My son turned 17 over the summer, and I asked him to be patient with me because this is the first time I've been a dad of a 17-year-old. I will most likely make mistakes, and I will definitely need encouragement and guidance as I try to be the best dad that I can be. I realize that I don't parent in a vacuum. I'm not alone. I'm blessed with access to community, to brothers who encourage and come alongside and with mentors, and of course, our tradition of faith. There's a well-known verse from a collection of ancient wisdom called Proverbs. Proverbs 22, verse 6, and it says this, Point your kids in the right direction. And when they're old, they won't be lost. Point your kids in the right direction. It can sound like a daunting task, or it can be an amazing invitation. I would invite you as a dad, a stepdad, an uncle, a big brother, a grandpa, a mentor, a teacher, wherever you are in relation to the young people in your life to step into this invitation and the opportunity we have to model what following Jesus really looks like. Going beyond the right answers and into the right actions. We can model a deep faith in God and we can model what it means to be kind. We can model a deep commitment to justice. We can model what healthy relationships look like in all of our spheres. And we can model what it means to make space for marginalized voices. This is what it is to be an intentional dad to be an intentional man, choosing to be present and not only say what is right, but to do what is right. And it's a good word because you are not alone.
Amazing. Thanks, Chris. So excited to be partnering with you on these shows. All right, guys, as we wrap it up, what would be your words of encouragement to dads who are struggling today as they're listening to this? I think uh, for me, I would encourage dads that uh, God gives grace to the humble, hmm. you know? So you're just be humble, be humble, reach out to him, not only to God, but reach out to community around you. You don't have to do parenting alone. And uh, you don't have to do fathering alone. Find a band of men who fear the Lord and can call you out and encourage you. And uh, when you're feeling like you're struggling, that you can you can do well to to admit hardships, admit even joys, and they can share in the joys. They can and stand with you in the hard times. I, I think be humble about it. Nobody can be perfect in this stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyone who says they're perfect, we're going to find out after they die they weren't perfect. Yeah, stories are going to come out. So be humble. God gives you grace. Uh, I think that's it. Amazing. Chris, how about you? Really simple. It's not too late to be the dad that you want to be. It's not too late. And so take all these lessons, what Art just said, and begin to apply it. So if you are one who has had a relationship with your kids that are, that are afraid or you've been distant or work has taken priority, it's not too late to change the narrative and to make space for a better future for you and your family so take the time do the work it's hard work but it's good work yeah and matt what about you your encouragement oh man i just feel like everything flows from my relationship from jesus that's what i've been learning for maybe the last five years trying to just sit with and so if i can order my interior world and be at peace with jesus and be transformed by him then that will help transform the way i parent and so for people who are struggling and wondering I would just say, hey, take a look at the person and teachings of Jesus, find that center there, and that allows you then to love in a way that you can't just on your own. Beautiful. Awesome. How about you, Mel? So oh you've goodness. been sitting yeah. in. What wow. do you think? I was listening. Here's the thing. As, as a woman and thinking about dads, I think for women out there, we just need to pray for you guys that, like I think what Art said originally, mm -hmm. that you would choose to be intentional. It's choices. If you, you know, you can choose not to work and be with your kids. You can choose not to be on your phone and be with your kids. So I think for me, it's just a reminder you guys for me to pray for dad to say, be intentional, choose what's good and choose what's right and choose your kids. Yeah, beauty. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matt, Art and Chris for being with us. Honest conversation, I learned a lot. Um, I know this conversation is gonna continue so you'll be hearing from me soon. But I just love that you are willing just to say, you know what, it's, we're not perfect, we're on this journey together, but uh, we're gonna try our best. And, and Jesus helps us mm -hmm. through this. Mm -hmm. So to join in with this dad conversation, you can jump into Facebook, Instagram, add your stories, your advice, your thoughts. We would love to hear from you, so please jump on there. And if you wanna hear the full interview of John Tyson, because we only gave you a little tease, uh, go to our See Here Love podcast on our Apple podcast and Spotify and hear the whole conversation. And See Here Love on YouTube. You can watch past episodes, more content, or go to seeherelove.com to dig in and learn more. And two things as we close. Dads, if you're listening, remember, you're not alone. Ask for help, be honest, and ask God to help you to be more present, patient, and loving. And second, mm. of course, like how I end every single show, dads and parents know this. You are seen, you are heard, and you are deeply loved by God. Thank you for joining us today. And thanks, guys. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Woo! Peace. Awesome. Well done. Yeah. See, here, love. Thanks our partners who make this show possible. <laughs>